Well, hello, everyone out there. This is Don Smith, and I uh, am very excited this morning as I'm doing my first interview with my first guest, a friend of mine here who I've met since I've moved to Morro Bay, California, and his name is Kerry Drager. And Kerry's going to actually do a talk today on low-tech strategies to enhance creativity. So I'm excited about that because I learn from everybody I talk to, and uh, that's the whole cool thing to me about photography uh, is that we can all learn from each other. I don't think anybody has the answers. So, Gary, welcome. Uh, we're glad to have you as the first guest here on well, the show. Thank, well, thank you very much, Don. It's a real honor to be uh, on your show and as also the first guest. Okay, well, I'm a little nervous this morning. My wife, Barry, asked me, are you nervous? I said, I just don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> so I'm going to try to handle the technical side of this recording um, and let Kerry do the inter do uh, his presentation. But I want to give you guys first, I I'm very impressed with Kerry's background. I always knew he was a wonderful photographer, uh, and I love seeing his work. Um, but as I mentioned, Kerry is an outdoor photographer and author who's based here on the California Central Coast. For those of you watching around the world that don't know where Morro Bay is, we're kind of uh, carry about halfway in between San Francisco and Los Angeles. Is that about right? That's about right. That's yeah. how I identify it. Yeah, if you come up uh, Highway 101 out of LA, because my son now lives down there, it's about a three hour drive. And mm -hmm. our little town sits right along the water, the ocean and the little bay that's called Morro Bay itself. And then the larger bay, the outer bay is Estero Bay. And it's just a absolutely beautiful place, especially for two photographers to live. Yeah. Um, I think we're never without subject matter at any time we wanna go out. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned, Carrie's a teacher, a writer and a photographer. And Carrie, I notice here you love exhibiting your work also. Is that locally here or can you expand on that a little bit? Um, yes, I have uh, exhibit, exhibited my work, uh, local galleries and such in the past, and I'm not in one currently, but I will be again soon. Okay. And that's, so that's, uh, that's just a different aspect that I enjoy doing, but my yeah. main gigs are uh, teaching and shooting. Terrific. Okay. And speaking of teaching, you teach online with the Brian Peterson School of Photography. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct, yeah. And then you uh, do some local teaching at our local junior college here, Cuesta Junior College. Yeah, Cuesta College uh, in the community pro, uh, programs area. Awesome. Cuesta. Okay. Now, this is the thing that I was so impressed. <laughs> You're the author of six nationally public books, and I'm going to name them off. Scenic Photography 101, The Better Guide to Creative Digital Photography, and Better... Uh, the Better Photo Guide to Photographing Light. Uh, then you mentioned three more, The Golden Dream, California, from Gold Rush to Statehood, a coffee table book, which is awesome, called The California Desert, and then finally another photo book, Portrait of California. Can you talk a little bit about how some of these books came to be? Oh, that's a, a good question. Well, my photography started when um, I started to put all of my uh, interests and hobbies together. Um, early on, I was a, a journalism major at California State University, Sacramento. Journalism, not photojournalism, mm -hmm. but journalism. On the side, I had photography as an interest, and also I loved the outdoors, hiking, camping, um, cross-country skiing. Uh, and this sort of thing. And finally, um, I decided, especially after seeing the work of uh, Galen Rao, I had his books, I met him a few times and such, and he's out there writing, uh, doing photography, and also climbing. I was, I'm, I've never been a climber, but the concept is still there where he's out doing things and writing and photographing about it. And I thought, you know, that is cool. And then, uh, but my photography skills, this was back in 1980, weren't quite up to snuff 
with my writing and such. So I took a lot of workshops and seminars. And I'll tell you, Don, if you were around doing workshops, then I would have taken all of yours. <laughs> well, uh, you know, because uh, I was, I wanted a, someone, uh, a photographer who's really good and also someone who's very personable and loves to share their uh, techniques and, and such. And so that would, would be my kind of guideline uh, back then. And, and some of the ones I did take uh, workshops from, uh, you know them, William Neal, yep. uh, Lewis Kemper. Yep. And so, um, and that's kind of how I got started. Then I started writing articles uh, for newspapers and magazines where I incorporated my love of the outdoors, my writing and my photography in different articles. And then I got to the point where I'm going to thinking about a coffee table book and through a company called um, up in, it was a company up in uh, Graphic Arts Center Publishing up in Oregon who specialized in books about regions and also states. And so um, I came up with the idea on California desert and that was my first uh, book. Excellent. Well, you mentioned a few things in there, Carrie. First of all, I want to thank you for saying you would take my workshop. That's uh, quite an honor. Uh, Galen Rao, you, uh, he was my uh, number one next to Ansel Adams. Uh, mm -hmm. But when Ansel was black and white, obviously, and um, when, when I first discovered Galen was through his masterpiece, uh, Mountain Light, I think I've read that yes. book at least 10 times. I call, it, I call it my Bible. Every time I go back, I, I yeah. find something a little new in there. But Galen influenced me that it was so much about the light. In fact, that was the name of the book, obviously, Mountain Light, the name of his gallery that he had for years until his passing. And uh, he would shoot with 35 millimeter. He showed that mm -hmm. You no longer had to have a four by five or an eight by mm -hmm. ten to create these amazing landscape photos, and yeah, mm -hmm. so he was a huge, huge influence uh, that really kind of pushed me uh, to do my landscape photography on a more serious basis. So mm -hmm. um, I want to mention a few other things, and I got a question, couple questions, and we'll get the presentation started. Um, Carrie's worked appeared in national magazines, Hallmark Cards, Sierra Club calendars, and American Express advertising campaign, which is intriguing to me. Now, was that just a photo they used of yours? or um, No, that... they used, used a, a good question. They used a bunch of photos uh, that I took in, in Palm Springs and for my California Desert book. And they liked my work and wanted to incorporate it into uh, an advertising campaign. And they had uh, a bunch of different campaigns going on from different parts of the country. And they used my work in uh, of Palm Springs in, their, in one of their campaigns. Very cool. Very cool. And you also have been profiled in Outdoor Photographer and Shutterbug magazines, as well as one more book I'm going to mention here, The Photographer's Guide to Building Your Photography Business. And are, th are most of your books, so that's seven books, if I'm doing my math correctly, that you have had published, are they still available if our guests would like to go um, out and find them? Yeah, some of them are. That last one you mentioned, I was just it, as a part of someone else's book, not, uh, okay. it wasn't my book per se, yeah. but I was one of the photographers. Uh, featured in it. Yes. Great. And Carrie, I know you're out on social media regularly. That's how I first met you before mm -hmm. I ever even moved down to the area mm -hmm. and then got to meet you through a lunch when Bill Neal came into the area and the three of us yes. got together. Yeah. Um, and you're on, I know you're on Facebook and Instagram. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. how yes, that is correct. Yes. Okay. And people can follow your work there. So, I'm easy to find. All my pages are are public, so I'm I'm easy to find. Terrific. Okay, couple questions, and then we're going to turn the uh, presentation over to you. Um, so, how did you? I'm I'm always interested in other photographers. One of the cool things about being in this business over all these years 
is getting to meet people such as yourself, other creatives, people who have done it for a living. And how, what, how did you go about getting into all of this? Um, well, that's a good question. And it, it did uh, start with my, uh, all my interests in the heart, um, outdoors and photography and writing. And that's how I first, and I wanted to kind of put them all together. And uh, so that's kind of how it got started. Then I just did a lot of studying. Um, when Outdoor Photographer Magazine came out, that was an important thing mm -hmm. for me. Uh, there were other photography mountains uh, magazines out there, but um, they rare, they didn't always have anything that I was interested in. I was interested in out well outdoor photography. Yeah. And so when that came along, I just read it cover to cover. I got to know through the magazine different photographers and their work and their uh, processes and such. And then um, I was still, you know, taking uh, seminars and workshops and and such and a few classes here and there. And eventually, then I mentioned uh, my first book, a coffee table book, and then I started looking at other books out there and came up with other ideas and and for um different projects and yeah. one of the things i uh mentioned brian peterson his school i teach with and interestingly he was one of my uh quote mentors uh, early on as well um uh, galen Rao certainly but also brian peterson through his uh books and one of his um, well-known books, uh, Understanding Exposure, and he's had a number of others. And, and so um, several years ago, when he invited me to um, teach with him at his school, uh, I, was, I was honored, of course. And also, I just thought, it was, eh, that's kind of cool. He was, you know, I kind of learned, he was one of the important ones I learned photography from. And here... Uh, he just invited me to uh, teach at his school. And so there, we, you know, sometimes things kind of go full cir uh, circle. Yeah. And I'll, I'll make sure to put the link into the show notes below so our yeah. guests can, mm -hmm. can check that out. Um, a couple other things here I want to I wanna talk about. I know today uh, a big thing that's happening in all the arts, not just in what you and I are doing, is mm -hmm. artificial intelligence. And mm -hmm. how do you see artificial intelligence in photography? And you can talk, you know, a lot of photographers are very negative and down on it, but then there's other photographers that say, you know, it's here to stay. Here's how I'm going to go about incorporating it. I'd like to hear your thoughts on AI. Uh, that's a good question. And I've thought a lot about this over the years, of course, this AI thing that's really come up recently, especially with Photoshop adding different features, and I, I use Photoshop, uh, but I've thought about it over the years, and when I see a, a photo, and it's a digital art one, and it's well done, I, I love seeing it, and uh, the only thing is, is that if it looks like a real photo, but it's actually not, um, I would like I really expect the uh, photographer or the creator to to mention that. Uh, I that agree with you about, 100 percent on that. And so, consequently, if it is um, a quote quote fake photo, um, I'll enjoy if I if I know it and I, and I it caught my eye, I'll enjoy it yeah. looking at it. Just because I don't do it doesn't necessarily mean that I. I hate it or don't want it to exist. I just want to know when a photographer is uh, creating a photo out of nothing or uh, in the past of be maybe compositing different elements into a scene that didn't exist in reality. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that doesn't preclude though, for me anyway, it doesn't preclude um, someone doing a lot of work on a photo because of the limitations of the ca uh, camera and your image of of the milky way over uh moro rock the central coast um landmark 
it's just amazing in you. First of all, you spent a couple of years with it in your mind, what you want to do. And then when you got there and did it, uh, it took a few days here and there, different sessions to just really work on the photo to get it, not to come up with something that didn't exist, but just to get it the way you saw it at the time you were there. You saw the scene, you knew what you want, what you want to do, but the you know limitations of the camera, there you go. It yeah. takes a lot of work. And so that, um, for my own work, um, I'm not, I, um, I love nighttime photography, but I just don't uh, do it myself. I love seeing, seeing it. And, and so um, I don't get into quite the complicated uh, uh, post processing that it would require, but mm -hmm. I love seeing uh, good work. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Hey, one other thing, and we'll get going here. And you may want to incorporate this question into your presentation. So let me know. But you mentioned low tech strategies to boost one's creativity. And you also use the term forced creativity to help a photographer break out of a creative rut. Um, in other words, times when you feel the creative juices just aren't flowing. Boy, this is a question that I deal with all the time with myself. So I would love to hear um, how does this work, basically? Um, yeah, it, and my uh, photo examples uh, a little bit later here will it kind of incorporates that. But I have a lot of little quote tricks, and some of it is evaluating your work, and maybe you haven't done any uh, wide angle work for a while, like close up work, and. And you know, you just go out and you force yourself, regardless of the scene, you just go out and all you you have that zoom lens. If you have a, a 24 to 200 zoom, you just you stick it on 24 and you leave it there. Mm -hmm. And then that's all you're gonna be shooting. So you're yeah. looking for scene. It forces you to look for uh wide angle even though you're seeing uh boy there's some birds over there or i'm gonna i'd love to zoom in tight on that no no you're just you're just using a wide angle conversely um uh, maybe you haven't been doing any long you know telephoto work so you go to your longest zoom um telephoto maybe 200 300 400 whatever it is and that's all you're shooting that day other times, uh, maybe you haven't been shooting enough verticals, so I'm going to go out and just shoot verticals today. No matter what it is, it's just a vertical format. My camera is stuck on that, and I'm going to look for compositions that work in, in vertically. Yeah. And then, you know, those are some of the, quote, forced creativity. So you don't, you may not feel creative on a particular day, but you're using techniques that really force you to get creative if you're going to get any pictures at all, because you have this, this kind of rule or this guideline where you're only going to shoot it one way and, and that's it. You know, yeah. that, those are great tips. I, I remember my indoctrination into that was years ago when my primary uh, genre of photography was, um, uh, sports and i was out in the arizona desert for six weeks in spring training mm -hmm. and our game ended and we had a couple hours of light left and i went up to a place i'd been wanting to shoot and i had envisioned in my mind all these great wide angle shots near far relationships and when i got up there i realized i had left all my gear back at the apartment other than one bag with a 300 28 and one camera and a tripod and I pulled up and I was and started immediately beating myself up and then said, wait a minute, you've got a camera, you've got a lens, you've got beautiful scenes, walk mm -hmm. around and see what you can shoot telephoto with a 300 mil. And it forced me to lock in and I did it for about 90 minutes till I lost the light. Uh -huh. That was a huge learning moment for me. It sounds simple, but it mm -hmm. really was a huge moment that propelled me forward in my photography. So mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate those tips because I think they're very valuable that people do spend some time, especially things it, it, like you said something about if you're used to seeing the world horizontally, you go out and you, you do a session, a shoot, 
where you never turn that camera out of the vertical mode and you right. get you train your mind and your vision to see vertically. I, th I think that's an awesome way of doing things. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm excited about your presentation. So uh, if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share your screen with a beautiful picture here of Moro Rock. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, Kerry. Yes. And OK, thank you, Don. And just to make sure, can you uh, see me circling Moro Rock here? Yes, I can. OK, good. I just want to make sure because I did a separate setting and it worked. So right. anyway, this. Uh, so the first thing is, is with me, with my landscape and seascape work, uh, it's really basically the sky that kind of determines how I'm going to photograph a scene. And this is a sunrise scene of Morro Bay, including uh, Morro Rock, uh, which is about 580, excuse me, 580 feet high is the landmark along the coast. And and so I place it just in the lower part of the scene, but really the sky is just tremendous. So um, I put the horizon line low in the sky. And so that kind of determined that seeing the scene determined kind of my composition. However, love the waves down here. So I didn't want to go too low with the horizon. And here's what, another- One thing, Carrie, before you yeah. move off, I love the reflection of those clouds in the water. I, oh, I, your composition yeah. is beautiful, but that that light, that reflection just seals Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So when I saw, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I first saw the scene developing, I was going to uh, maybe put the bottom uh, border right about here. Mm -hmm. I was going to put, you know, and just have a huge expanse of sky. And then as I saw the reflections and also the waves going on, I thought I need to include more of that below. And so I'm glad you mentioned that. That's, That's a good a great choice. Yeah. So even though it's the sky kind of determines, it's the um, uh, a lot of it, but it's also the landscape or seascape that also um, determines the composition. And this is a way, by the way, to come up with uh, different compositions. I may go out and is expecting a great sky and it doesn't happen. And in a moment, we'll be talking a little bit about that. Here's another scene, uh, Morro Bay, there's Morro Rock, a different view of it and uh, sailboats in the foreground. And uh, in this case, I, uh, you know, another great sky and also uh, reflections going on here. Yeah, and that so, is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, and uh, notice too, so the, uh, in most cases, we want the horizon line to be away from the middle for a more dynamic composition. And, but there are exceptions to that rule. And we'll get to that too. And, but in this case, we have two main focal points, the sun burst and the rock, and there you go. Yeah, gorgeous shot. Mm -hmm. And, but now all of a sudden, uh, I mentioned you want the sky high in the frame or low in the frame, depending on what's happening down below or the sky. But when you have a fantastic sky like this, and then really an interesting foreground, um, I just pretty much put the horizon in the middle. And when I tried it in other ways, uh, putting the horizon high or low, I was just leaving out a key element. So uh, I just love this, this uh, amazing cloud formation, but also the down below all the textures and the uh, designs and such. And uh, the birds were a little nice little extra. It was a nice there. little extra. Hey, one thing before you move away from that slide. Um, this comes up a lot at my workshops with my students, and they'll we'll, we'll be talking about setting the horizon, you know, a little more off center. But this one is a little more centered, and mm -hmm. I, I'm not one that all I'm not so hard and rule bound that you can never place a horizon in the center, 
what, what are your thoughts about this? And this is one that comes pretty close. This is a little bit above center, but this picture just flat works. And um, so what do you think about these hard and fast rules? Oh, uh, that's a good question. And it is a pretty much a centered composition. And what's interesting is it came about because of two other hard and fast rules. One is that if you have a great sky, you want to put the horizon low in the frame to emphasize the sky. If you have a great landscape or seascape down below, then you want to put the horizon high in the frame. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, a seascape or landscape below or the sky above kind of determines where you put it. What happens when you have a great sky and a great lower part? Then sometimes you might want to put the horizon right across the middle. And that's I, what I decided to do here. I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> I think a lot of... Um, camera club judges might be a little guilty of their train never, never, especially in landscape to never put, um, you know, the horizon right across the middle of the frame. And, 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 and this is just a perfect example of when it, it, it totally works. I, I, I wouldn't really want to see this picture done any other way because the formations of the clouds and like you said, the texture and the formation of the water and the little stream flowing out to the ocean there, it, it's just perfect. It, and I think you've given equal balance to both in the scene. And mm -hmm. in this scene, I think both demand equal balance and attention. Yes, that's a good point. And often you can just, uh, you know, with landscapes and such, mostly uh, they're just kind of sitting there and you do have a little time to um, play with the scene as you're shooting it. But if you imagine me, um, you know, with that great sky pointing the camera upward and then putting the bottom border right about here. Yeah. Uh, and leaving out this. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah. Uh, I'm leaving out some good stuff. This I would part, agree. Part here isn't anywhere near as eye catching as this entire area. So yeah. uh, that's a good point. I do have one, there is one rule of composition that can never be broken. And it's a hard and fast rule, and you can't break it. And here's the rule. Every composition rule can be broken successfully and creatively. Every rule can be broken. I love that. I love that. Successfully. And that rule, every rule can be broken, is there are no exceptions to that rule. I completely agree. Gosh, I, yeah. I'm going to have to write that down and use it in my workshops. <laughs> Perfectly yeah. said. I agree 100%. Yeah. Every rule can be broken successfully. That That's important. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the one rule that's hard and fast. <laughs> and onward here, here's another scene here. And where um, uh, this is uh, at dawn, right before sunrise, oh, I love at that. Cayucas Pier, right near our homes, and you know, in in yeah. Morro Bay, and and here, um, you know, the sky is great, and and but down below, this is go, you know nicely uh, going on too, and so I I put the pier right there, and the horizon pretty much in the center. Excellent. A very yeah. slow uh, shutter speed of about. 30 seconds. Did you happen to use a neutral density filter on this or was it just because of the time of the day at dawn, the light was low enough that you could get that 30 seconds? Uh, that's it correctly. It's that it's very uh, early and it was easy to get 30 second exposure without any filters or anything. Okay, terrific. You're going to you're going to get me getting out of bed early to go chase this shot now. Uh, I'll tell <laughs> last, you. Couple, last couple mornings we've woken up I can barely see across the street. Oh, the fog has been in so thick. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. And here is now this is a little more of a classic example of of when you uh put the horizon across the middle is when you have a reflection and uh, so the show the symmetry yeah. uh, with the clouds above and the reflection below. But uh, I also just love the footprints. They are not mine. 
<laughs> some animal and going like along like print. that yeah and uh yeah animal tracks footprints and and whatever in any case uh i just love this scene but uh you know the clouds going across there and the uh, reflection i would have shot it anyway but i'll tell you uh this is that little extra going yeah on. i think that's a perfect example for people who are still you know, they're, they're, they're working their way through learning uh, landscape photography and how do I get a little better? And they, they may see this scene developing like you did, but, mm -hmm. but you pushed yourself to just find, is there anything else interesting that I could add into that composition? That's just a, mm -hmm. a lovely line that takes your eye in and through the scene. Right. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. And here, um, here at dawn uh, on a, a particular uh, full moon day. And uh, this is up, you know, down at, uh, or up at uh, Cayucas also, not right near where that previous photo was. And then I just got there really early in the morning. This is right after, you know, right about 20 minutes before sunrise. And I wanted to position the moon right where it is between this rock here and this rock there. Yeah, that's and you got the beautiful twilight wedge and the moon sitting in the wedge mm -hmm. and just above mm -hmm. your shadow there. It's gorgeous, gorgeous shot. Yeah, and it, thank you. And also I want to incorporate a, a good amount of, uh, of the ocean below. And if you look at right at the top, you see the color is starting to go. And so that kind of determine how much sky I wanted. I did not want any more than I am including here. And then, but no, also knowing that I get those nice, warm and cool reflections below. Which, this, yeah. I just love this type of morning. And it's a re, even if there's no full moon, it's, it's um, again, about 20 minutes before sunrise and you get the nice mixture of warm colors versus cool blues and yeah I can't beat that i know uh living around here for the past couple of years now i see a lot of who look like serious photographers and they're out you know 11 in the morning two in the afternoon mm -hmm. and i'm thinking yeah. if you guys can just get out on the edges of the day you're going to see right. this scene in such much more beautiful seductive light this this looks like a painting to me this is so well mm -hmm. done Oh, thank you. And yeah, I I totally agree. The edges of the day, and um, in fact, Galen Rowell used to talk about that. Those uh, the trans transition yeah. transitions and um, and such. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, gorgeous. Now here's one where there is a, a sky going on. And it also brings up another uh, thing that I like to get, especially when I'm shooting seascapes, is getting kind of that layered effect of, of waves and such. And so I have a layer down here, another one here, 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 here. And then the top is kind of the sky, which is includes all the uh, mist and, and water flying up there. And this, again, is right at sunset. The sun is just above the horizon and then i'm using a long telephoto of about um i forget three or four hundred millimeters and to just isolate the scene was this captured carrie do you remember was this captured more in the winter time to get these type of waves ah uh, yes yeah, yeah definitely the winter time and um and i was predicted to have really high surf yeah active surf and so i went out right over there at Morro Beach, right next to the rock and um, and shot it. Yeah, that's gorgeous. I, I, I've written and talked quite a bit to people about the importance, if you wanna get serious about your landscape photography, you have to really learn to follow the weather and what's going mm -hmm. on in your yes. local area. Because somebody could visit our area right now at this time of year and they go, hey, I'm not seeing waves like that. And it's like, yeah. well, no, we're not having any storms out on the Pacific or the big winds that are mm -hmm. generating these types of swells that will produce these waves for you. So right. knowing an area and following a local forecast, even if you're not from that area, it just tilts 
the advantage into your favor. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know? Instead of just showing up and hoping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you probably hear a lot on your uh, social media. You're very lucky. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah, we have to create our own luck. And this yeah, is a exactly. perfect example where you looked at a local forecast and said, you know what, at sunset, uh, it could be pretty cool out there. And this is where the waves can get at some of their highest, I'm finding after living around here. Um, mm -hmm. This is the part that the surfers like out there too. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yes, that's a good point. And let's see here. Um, now here, um, in the, this is in the wine country. And here I had a blank sky day, but it's important, no clouds in the sky. So certainly I didn't want a big, uh, huge landscape with, which include a gigantic sky uh, because there's just no clouds. However, I love the blue yeah. and I love scenes with a lone tree and it's, it's often not easy to find, especially no, if it has some style. And then get the low angled sunlight which is coming along to get the shadows, it brings out the textures here. And also I love a uh, graphic design where it has strong lines. And um, the previous one of the ways had lots of lines to yeah. them. Here the diagonals. Diagonal lines have just so much more visual energy than lines that are parallel to the uh, top of or bottom borders. But um, here I had some good ones there and I had to include a little bit of sky. So in this case, the sky was important and uh, but just a sliver of it. I didn't want any more. Uh, and I certainly didn't want any less. Uh, I didn't want the top border to come right along there where it feels cramped. I want to have lots of breathing space above it, but not too much. And I think so, very important, I, I love that that sky's there too. Uh, if you look at Carrie's picture, the top, very top left, he was very conscientious about allowing the hill, the line of the green hill to finish and not merge into the sky before it hits the edge of the frame. And I think that that's something you had to consciously think about. And we talk about it in the workshops, let your eye drift around the perimeter of that frame and make sure we're not cutting, because lines, lines lead the eye, would you agree? <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's a good point and the edges and uh, yes. let's talk about going on border patrol. Border patrol, um, yeah. yeah. You know, as you're shooting and then um, maybe, you know, if it's a, and it's so nice with uh, digital, one of the great things about digital photography is the fact that you can see what you just shot on the back of the um, uh, camera. Yeah, yeah. And Agreed. so, and then you can do uh, border patrol after the fact and go, and assuming it's a landscape that's not going anywhere, you can uh, reshoot it if necessary. Yeah. And here's another scene, Mid, uh, midday, I'm not often out at midday, but I'll tell you when you have the sparkles going on on a bright sunny day and, um, and you get the sparkles on the bay like this. And once again, I have, and it's a blank sky day, so didn't want to emphasize the uh, sky. However, in this particular photo, not unlike the previous one, I love the uh, layered effect. So I have a strip of sky above here, a strip of the distant hills. They're pretty sharply defined. So a strip of lingering fog, another strip of the opposite shoreline. And then down below is a section of sparkles and such. And then an extremely cooperative sailboat came right along and I captured it right there. Yeah, yeah, very well thought through on this composition. And, uh, but again, I don't, I'm not often right in midday, but um, I love uh, sparkling waters like this. And uh, again, it's a way to include the sky, but uh, I'm not a big expanse of it because it's yeah. just a big sky, but a little bit of it, like the previous photo, it just enhances the um, 
composition. In this case, no sky at all. Beautiful picture. Yeah, I, I just love these um, designs and such on the beach. And maybe I do have a little bit of sky. And this little strip of water right here is really reflecting the sky, and which is blue. And so uh, it has this scene right at sunset, has that cool and warm color contrast that I really love. You know, just the warm tones on the beach and such, and then the cool blue yeah. reflected in the water. Yeah. How how do you get so lucky to not get footprints in your <laughs> that beautiful sand, Carrie? <laughs> I'll guarantee yeah. I would have a whole set of footprints going through there <laughs> if I saw this scene. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a good question, Don, but I can tell you that there's a reason I put the bottom border right here instead of a few feet lower. And because a few feet below there, has my footprints. <laughs> That's okay. true. Worse when we do it to ourselves, right? <laughs> exactly. And uh, I, as I'm standing, I'm looking, oh no, I'm standing in my seat. <laughs> but thanks to um, moving the camera, adjusting a little bit, it's no longer in my scene. That was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Once again, we have the strong diagonal lines going yeah. on. And then uh, it was not an afterthought, just to include a little um, a section of sand right at uh, Sandy Beach, right at the upper right. I like that you put that there. Mm. Yeah, so uh, wide angle, that's, uh, that's you know, I know you um, talk about that and wide angle getting a really close to the camera foreground and extending outward. Uh, yeah. Those are, can be special. Now for my next um, technique is the, what I call the fine art of turning around. And uh, I love the scene here. It just, uh, it's on the uh, beach and it's right at sunset. The sun is behind me. Uh, the sky and ocean and everything is behind me. I'm on the beach with this little stream of water that's uh, going along the beach out to the out to sea, so to speak. And, and uh, the fine art of turning around is, is something uh, Brian Peterson talked about uh, a few times where, you know, if you have a good scene in front of you with great light and color and everything, there's a possibility that if you turn around, the scene behind you is going to have nice color and light too. A different scene, but it's going to look nice too. Uh, sometimes, of course, we're shooting maybe a sunset from a parking lot. If you turn around, yeah, maybe great light behind you, but then it's cars and pavement, right? But uh, in this case, uh, I turned around, I followed that advice, and I'll tell you, it's sometimes, and we'll see in a minute here, especially, it's you have to force yourself to look behind you. But the nice thing is it only takes a second. You don't have to, um, you only, if you're shooting from a tripod, you only move it if you look around and, and see something as I did right here. And just a small section of the previous scene right there. That's lovely. And um, I just, uh, you know, it's, it's backlit and, but, that was going on behind me. And, and I, again, I love the scene I just showed you and I was going to work it some other ways. But then I thought, I got I just looked around and then all of a sudden I started um, working that shot in different ways, but just, of course, just love the, the textures and lines and details and light and color and everything about it. And here's another one. And I'll tell you, when you're looking at a, 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 suns, um, a sunset sky like this and reflections and such, uh, you have, as I mentioned before, it's not intuitive to just stop for a moment, even for a moment, and turn around and look. 
and you have to force yourself and this was especially here this is a developing sunset it got better after this although i didn't know it at the time i was hoping but it was getting better and better and still i turned around and i'm glad i did because i got my this was last year and i got my probably my favorite small intimate scene photo just by turning around oh. and uh just a short ways away turning around my back to the uh to the sky and um it was picking up all the colors and textures and designs and everything on the beach and the reflections look at that that's just that's, that's, yeah and down here as well and then the scene and this became probably my favorite intimate scene uh, last year okay so i turned around from here to there to um let me, let me get here to the, get my favorite what turned out to be my favorite intimate scene and then i decided you know I'm enjoying this, but I better turn around again. And this one, I have my back to the sky, to the ocean. And then I decide I'm gonna turn around again, and which I did. And that same scene before now looks like this. Wow. <laughs> that That is incredible. You're pinching yourself at this point. <laughs> yes, and and this turned out to be my favorite sunset sea, seascape of oh, last year why? and That's so i have two favorites just within a minute of each other and i got two instead of one by the simple technique low tech technique of just looking behind me yeah yeah hockey we got a favorite term i, I worked for the san jose sharks for 28 years Keep your head on a swivel. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, good. Oh, I like that. Yeah, in hockey, it was self-preservation. You don't know yeah, where your right. defenders are coming from. You're exactly. going to get drilled into the wall very quickly. So oh, coaches right. were constantly yeah. screaming, keep your head on a swivel. And yeah. I, I incorporated that into my photography. <laughs> yes, me yeah. too. Yeah, that's a great line. I love that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> And so here, here's another one, um, and it was developing, and I like this, but I knew it was going to get better, but still, I turned around and got something that's uh, totally unexpected, and um, right here, mm -hmm. and I just love the design going on. Once again, we have this layered look to it, and uh, by, and, and such, excuse me there, and uh, and just by uh, turning around, this was, I photographed, I was standing on the uh, Cayucas Pier, uh, getting that, and then I just turned around and looked on the beach and uh, just just, um, just a different type of scene, something I didn't expect to get that day, just by very, very looking beautiful. behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, I um, as I tell students, uh, Anytime you have questions or comments, you better interrupt me. Otherwise, <laughs> I will not stop. <laughs> and um, uh, this this next series, this one and the next two, are um, is what I call working the scene, just shooting it in different ways. And the different ways can be alternating between vertical or horizontal, but it can also be a big scene it can also incorporate looking behind you. It can uh, incorporate um, wide angle as I used here. And it can also uh, zoom in tight, but it just it's one of those forced creativity scenes. You add a scene you love, you, you know, the light and color and everything is working for you. And then after you get this picture, okay, look for something else totally different and it just forces you in to consider other possibilities lenses in this case uh i'm on the beach as you can see and then there's a pier up here as you can see and uh so after i shot this 
the sun is still above the horizon, and I decided to hustle up on top of the pier and shoot the waves. And I could see them out here, and I could say, you know what, there are nice things going out on in the waves, but I'm down here, and those are out there, so I get up above, and, and then for this next scene, um, I just zoom in tight on, on the waves. And in this case, took uh, camera off tripod, I'm shooting at about a 10th or 15th of a second, and I'm panning it, following the, the wave with my camera and along the way, clicking, clicking the shutter. That is really, really pretty. Very soft, pretty shot. Yeah, thank you to get that soft motion. And so I, I photographed ways for a few more minutes uh, until the sun went below the horizon, looked around and thought, you know, there's so, still some good light and color out there. Then I went, okay, I'm on top of the pier. Then I decided to go down very near to where I was before underneath the pier. For this scene right here wow. and i just i love the reflections the abstract quality of it yeah i do too and uh so this one here and then this one and this one were all within um you know about a 15 minute period and uh just really working working the scene Hey, Carrie, do you have, a, all, you, all of your images have a certain amount of, of graphic design. Do you, do you have any type of design training in your background, or is this something you just learned and taught yourself along the way? Um, I learned, taught myself, but also um, I think what really um, captured my imagination, in fact, really forced me further into it, was uh, Brian Peterson book, uh, Brian Peterson's book, uh, Learning to See Create Creatively. Okay. And, um, and that really covered it. And it brought in some new concepts and also emphasized some things I was already doing to a certain extent. But I said, I need to do look at it more. And so often, um, that's a good question, by the way. And often I'll see a design first. And so I can um, I can call this picture um, reflections on the beach at sunset. Another way to do it is um, abstract design and color, you know, okay. something like that. That's yeah. kind of what it really is. It just happens to be reflections at sunset on the beach, but um, abstract color and design is really what I'm thinking as I was shooting this. Okay. Now, this was, uh, this is also working the scene. And I had just finished, um, this, uh, this was um, at North Point and Mora Bay, and I was down on the beach and you uh, walk up, um, you walk a long stairway from the bluff top down to the beach and um, and I was shooting some nice scenes and then all the light and color was kind of gone. And so this was early morning. And so I'm coming up and as I'm coming up the, the staircase, I'm looking down and the ocean was looking pretty nice. And the color started, you know, there are lots of blue, you know, just about every blue there is, is in this picture. And I love the color blue. And the, plus all these, uh, like just these designs and such. So when I got to a good spot, uh, space to set up my tripod and compose the picture. And, and then uh, I had this very cooperative fisherman. And if the fisherman is, is good, meaning that they'll stick with it for a while and not go running off someplace else, then uh, I could wait for um, the background to be nice and bright. And because if it's darker like this behind the fisherman, the um, subject won't stand out. You want that dark black silhouette against brightness. So I shot this and I had my picture done. It, it was 
wonderful. I didn't have any sky in it, telephoto about 200 millimeters and had the waves going. And I thought, this is it. This finishes up my day. Then all of a sudden, some more fishermen come mm -hmm. on the scene. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not done here. What I'm going to do is hope. I know what I was hoping for. And I was willing to wait. And but here was not it. I love the idea of three fishermen, but have one who's just standing there. Uh, he's definitely not going to set up right next to this one right here. And um, and so I know what I was waiting for, and this time it happened. And this was my picture. Ah, oh, love that. And just just the line of. Perfect uh, fisherman, yeah, just perfect. Yeah. And and then the color started coming out more. And then all of a sudden, you know, I had all the blues before and still do, but then the warm tones as the sun was coming up more. Yeah. Now that's uh, yeah. I think that would have been that moment you say there it is, and <laughs> you couldn't have set that up any better. That there it is. That first yeah. one loved it, but I'll tell you, this is the one that um, for me is, is just uh, extra special. Now the next time I tr would try this, you know, nothing will happen. You know, <laughs> um, and so, but you never know. Certain never element know. of luck has to be involved in landscape. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So how are we doing on time? Well, we, we should, we're coming up on an hour. So we were talking about, we wanted to kind of hold it to no more mm -hmm. than an hour if possible, but. Um, uh, can we do a few more? Oh, certainly, certainly, yes. I'll do a few more here and get to the graphic design. And um, and I, what hit me here, remember we were talking about lines and diagonals mm -hmm. and this diagonal line of trees is just, Tremendous. And I'd seen this scene before, but in um, summer or fall, and you know, in California, including the coast, um, basically hills like this are just brown and they're not the rich greens and such that you get in the springtime. So I'm coming along, and this is one I planned on in the springtime. And then when the sky had kind of a a post storm clouds and then uh and that created all these interesting shadows in the hills there and and then i decided i'm gonna this is why one when i really emphasize the graphic design elements the strong line diagonal here this diagonal there which is a curving diagonal and then contrasting with this uh, perfectly parallel line down below and i just like these um uh these strong design in this photo or in the scene that i captured in the photo so uh, I do too. it's like a it's like a z shape that just yeah. takes your eye right for a ride from the trees up to the oh, diagonal oh. trees up to the the hilltop good point yeah exactly yeah. good point and so uh this is one where design is really what uh, got me going. And this, um, when I'm out photographing and I'm including an expanse of, um, of the ocean, and I do want, a, in most cases, I want to have some waves uh, going on, and then I'll wait for, um, get the lines of waves. And in many cases, I want those lines to be at an angle, a little bit diagonal, because I'll have the a horizon line or the distant uh, ocean line uh, to contrast with this nice and par uh, parallel to the borders. And here uh, up in um, San Simeon, right down the slope from uh, Purse Castle, the Central Coast tourist attraction, uh, this cove with, uh, in, Again, it was right late day, and I just love these lines, these curving lines. And at first, I wanted to include all of this one here, including to the right, but uh, it would bring in way too much dark sand, dark beach, and such. And so I decided 
to uh, use the composition I have here and where this line over here is kind of implied. Yeah. It's cut off, but it's implied. And so this is another scene where lines and, and such were an important part of it. But other graphic design elements, uh, texture and such, and then that color contrast. And here's a beach uh, scene where um, it was right after a rainstorm and we have water coming along in a little creek toward the beach. And then here's the beach scene right here. And then uh, the surf. And then I just like, this almost has that Z thing um, with the lines, the diagonal yes, lines. And yeah. like here and then another one kind of like that as well. And I love that, that little, uh, not to interrupt you, Carrie. <clears throat> no. On the left side of the stream, you got a little bit of a bluish line going there. Oh, uh, right. right there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Which, yeah, which mimics the color of the water out in the ocean. I just think that's really cool. Exactly. Yeah, just a lot of good because all of this other parts of the water. That's a good observation because it's all a warm tone. Yes. Uh, from sunset, and but. Right there, just the angle is reflecting directly off the sky above. Yeah, yeah and that's really so, cool. Yeah, so this was, you know, so this for me is uh, a design of line and just uh, uh, graphics as opposed to just a beach scene at sunset. Very well done. And I think that's, um, I think that's it. Okay, well. Wow, let um, I really want to thank you for spending the time to do this. Uh, I, I'm always in awe of other people's work. Um, it's part of being a photographer, I think. Um, I get tired of looking at my own stuff. <laughs> and when I can look at other people, especially somebody who's been at this as long as you have and has the creative eye and the knowledge about composition, mm -hmm. I just find it very intriguing. And I uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time to not only be my first guest, I think hopefully we pulled this off, uh, yeah. but I, I, I'm hoping our audience learned quite a bit because I learned a lot just listening to you. And I know I'll stick some of those little nuggets up in my brain. And the next time I go out, uh, and you've inspired me to go out and and continue to explore this beautiful place you and I get to call home. So um, well, I really want to thank you. And thank you for inviting me. And you tossed in some nuggets, too. I, I love the uh, back and forth interplay that we had. Yeah. And, uh, and you made some ob uh, observations that I hadn't even noticed. And I took the picture. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. I know we so tend to, as photographers, see a yeah. picture in our own way. Yeah. And it, it's kind of cool when somebody else can take a look at your image and say, wow, you know, and they'll point something out in my image that I didn't even think about because it wasn't right. where my concentration was. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, OK, uh, we kept it to just about an hour. So I want to mm -hmm. go ahead and um, wrap this up. And again, I appreciate you coming on. We're going to have more of these. One of the, the areas I thought maybe I could have you back, uh, I would always wanted to do a show about the publishing industry. And I get a lot of mm -hmm. questions. How do you go about publishing a book? And mm -hmm. um, you've had a lot of experience with it. So uh, mm -hmm. perhaps you would uh, grace us with your appearance again and share some knowledge about the publishing industry. I'd be now, happy to. Terrific. OK, yeah. and I'd like to thank our audience. If you guys hung in there till the end, we really appreciate it. And um, I hope you enjoyed this show and learned a lot in the process. And Till next time, this is Don Smith and with Carrie Drager. We'd both like to say goodbye and thank you for spending this past hour with us.